Hey, if you're new here, I'm Robert Aaron. And this is Jeremy for dinner and welcome to the ranch. The ranch is gone now, but I'm going to show you our favorite parts about the ranch. Onward, upward, adapt, and overcome. We're watching a YouTube video on deer meat for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, here's the deal. There's Sarah and baby Aria right back there. And this is our new camp. So we're gonna give y'all just a little bit of an afternoon ride with us. There's Sarah and baby Aria. I just party on me. It's amazing now to have baby Aria and the doggies and Sarah. And now Sarah has her new channel, Dear Mom. There's no words to describe this. Look how epic that is. That's just rad. <coughs> yes. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Looks like a big bunch of trees, but in all honesty, this is one of the most epic places you could imagine. We still have to put decorations up and nothing's how we want it, but it's a start. We couldn't have dreamed this up. Mm. Six years ago when we got the ranch, it was the biggest dream come true that we ever experienced. Yeah, for me, getting to know the property, building food plots, clearing trails, putting up tree stands, just getting to know the property. It was something that I wanted to do. It was something that I was able to do. I was happy just to have a property that I could pour my heart and soul into. When we got the ranch, Ari was just six months old. We weren't even pregnant with Emma yet. It's been a part of their entire life. It's been a part of our entire family. When I told the girls that we were losing the ranch, even though it was 100% out of my control, it was something that I had nothing to do with, they, they fell apart. They had it their entire life in their mind, they were gonna have it for their entire life. In my mind, I knew we were gonna lose a lease on land. Nothing lasts forever. But in my mind, I thought, hey, we had at least another 10 years. So when I get the call out of the blue to just grab your gear and go, it hit me hard. But it hit the girls even harder. This whole life that we've built through YouTube has been a huge learning experience. I would have never thought to own a house like this. I would have never thought to employ the people that we employ or have the things that we have, but Rob never stops. I'm very proud of him, not just with our business, but our relationship, our kids, our family, our entire life is his priority. Well, I love you, babe. And the moment I said I do, something inside of me changed. I knew that life wasn't about me anymore, it was about us. And I became more responsible, more driven, more hardworking than I had ever been before. It seems like every single day I love you more. I love the girls more. I love life more. I want to be my best. I want to do my best. And I know, hey, none of this lasts forever. But while we're here, I'm going to do my absolute best. And as a team, we do that. As a family, we do that. As a company, we do that. We are our best all the time. I'd like to tell you right now on video, see this? Hey, Hope, what's your boy's name? Knox. 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 Your wife's Danielle? Yep. Y'all are hereby ordered to come spend a weekend at the ranch with us. We'll go fishing, hunting, cooking, whatever you want. Because you know what? You got a lot to be proud of with this man right here. He's a hardworking American warrior. And I appreciate you so much, dude. Thank you very much. Losing the ranch has opened my eyes to so many things. Nothing lasts forever. I'm 46, you're 32. Aria's seven, Emma's five. I mean, nothing lasts forever. And so to think, what if I wasn't here? What if I couldn't do what I do? What if Dear Me For Dinner wasn't here? That's a scary situation, but it also makes you think properly. And that's a scary thing. You know, to lose you would be like losing a part of myself. A YouTuber that we film with, I know him very well. He deals with reptiles. He's got pancreatic cancer and it came out of nowhere. Like, just a matter of weeks and he was in a world of hurt. And he said something about not having life insurance and it touched me, not like this, touched me to my, to my core. And I thought, I've gotta do something while there's still time to do something, while there's time to do something about it. My whole life I've known I've needed life insurance. I've known that. That's one of those things that you know but you never wanna talk about you never want to deal with. Now, more than ever, I realize that it's important to talk about, it's important to deal with it. That's why I'm thankful we found Ethos. Years ago, we looked into a life insurance policy 
but it was super expensive. It was complicated. And getting it set up was so time consuming. Yeah. Once we filled out the application, we had a quote in minutes. The last time we tried this, before we found Ethos, it was a hassle, it cost a fortune, it took weeks, and it was more than I was willing to put up with. But now, with losing the ranch, I see them need more than ever for life insurance. And knowing that if something happens to me, at least my family and my crew, they have a little financial help, it goes a long way. It gives me peace of mind, and peace of mind is what matters and that's just a plain hard truth if you're interested in learning more about ethos or if you're interested in getting a free quote on life insurance today click on the link below it's quick it's easy and it'll give you peace of mind plus it's affordable ethos was the best price we got and by far the easiest process to apply yeah you know what they say all men die if you ever live i encourage you to get out there and live life every single day live it to the fullest this is a heck of a good spot this is just going to be a trip down memory lane and show you all the yeah. spots that are super special we uh we hung a stand in that pine tree back there and we called this whole spot twisty tree a couple years ago austin found a pine tree right over here that was sort of grown in a, into a twist and what makes this spot special is that you have a huge marsh on one side and the way that marsh runs, you've got oaks that run right along that marsh. So during a dry season, all the game can use the marsh. When the acorns are falling, they can use this oak hammock. And then as it gets wet, they move up into the high ground. So almost all parts of the year, game will use this area. What it hit him, man. A, I don't care where it hit him. What a buck, dude. Yeah, that's a good one. Are you kidding me? What a buck, dad. That just totally smacked me across the face. <laughs> the entire time I had this ranch, we had a feeder right there. But we very seldom hunted it. It was just a great spot deer, turkeys, hogs always used it. And we called this place Moat Stand. There was a pond in between the feeder and where the stand was. Got him. Right there, Stan. I hit him both times. Now that's what we're talking about. What a fatty. Perfect hog. My dad and I sat in the moat stand. The tree stand was right over here and we were hog hunting. And I was pregnant with Emma and that was before I even told everybody. So I knew I was pregnant in here, sitting in the stand before anybody else sitting with my dad. And now she's sitting here like this, crazy little chica. So this spot right here was probably the most frustrating spot on the whole ranch. I had a millennium lock on in that pine tree right there and we called this spot Y stand. If you look down there, there's a Y in the road right here and the hog, we always had a feeder down here. The problem is, no matter what way you came, these hogs just had an innate ability of winding you or seeing you. Oh, oh no. Well, are you that? hung up? Oh. Might be, I don't know. Mike. Are you kidding me? No. You're not, there's not too many people that get Robert Arrington to haul a hog out for you. Yeah. You're pretty special. <laughs> I, need <a> <laughs> I need a rope so I can wow. drag the next one. But I can tell you this. <laughs> No matter who I have come out here, I treat them the same. Yes, sir. Whether they're the president or whether they're you or anyone else, that's just how you treat people. There used to be a trail right here. It was just a major game trail. And this was the first time I ever came out filming with Robert. And I had no, I, I didn't even know that there was a feeder there, so I didn't know what was going on. I'm just holding the camera and all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. And I was like, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> So 
So you guys may think that was a little, you know, overwhelming. But back here in these woods on our property, these are great to eat, but they can be a huge devastation to our property. So this is where I used to park my buggy a lot. From here, I always call this the four corners. From here, you could walk around and go hunt Y stand and moat stand. You could also walk down and hunt five acre. This was also a very, uh, this is a very prolific area for our poachers to come in off of Atlantic Ridge and off of the North Power Line. This is where they would come in. And I never, I never gave those people too hard of a time. Some of them knew I knew them. Others, hey, it is what it is. At this point, these are all just fading memories. I cannot tell you how many times we snuck down this road right here. We would sneak down here and let me show you what we'd get to. There you have it. I love this stand. That was one of my favorite stands ever. Yeah, that was a great stand. Five acre food plot, you guys. We killed a lot of turkeys. We always turkey hunted on the far south end and around the corner, but this was a great spot because the turkeys would typically roost to the west of us. They would pitch down into the five acre food plot and then you could call them around to you. That was the most awesome turkey hunt I've ever been on. You guys, they they were gobbling all morning. Oh, now I'm shaking really bad. They were gobbling all morning long. And I'm looking this way because I'm hearing them that way. And all of a sudden, one flies in. I'm not, I'm sitting right there, you guys. Right there, I'm sitting. And I tried to cover up my face with mud once they start gobbling because I realized we're right on top of them. Perfect shot, baby. Oh, my God, this is so awesome. Uh, Look at that. Nice bird, nice big beard. Oh, yeah. oh, I thought it was a double beard. Five acre plot road. It's coming with me. If I have to dig, if I have to get a bulldozer to get this sign out. That one's coming to our house. Watch out, Emma. Slide that in there. All right, so what makes this spot really special? When you're coming from camp, you come up the power line road, take a left, you go to five acre food plot. We would go straight to the north. We'd go to what place we call the north wall, or we would hook a right, and that would take us to Gator Pond. Let me show you something cool. A couple years back, me and Austin, we'd been after these big long beards. We didn't know if they were at five acre, if they were over near Gator Pond. We didn't know where they were. So we set up right here at this little intersection. He's right there. I just killed a double with the 410, baby! <laughs> Give me one. Dad? Uh-huh. Dad? This is a spot we call the Gator Pond Food Plot. And if any of you guys have been watching recently, I came here and we found a hog named Trash Can. We were sitting right there and the hog came from back over here, was working his way into the food plot. Always a really good spot. We saw lots of deer here, lots of hogs, lots of turkeys. But as crazy as it sounds, I hunted here very, very little. Okay, y'all, this is my single most favorite spot. This is a spot we call the Outback Stand. Right over there, I had a ground blind. Yes, 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 yes! And the first day I ever hunted with Aria, 
we actually had a really nice big buck come out and I thought the deer was at 20 yards. It was at 30 yards. Aria shot low. I was so upset. But you know what? Come here, baby. Did we have a good time or what? Uh-huh. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This is a special spot, huh? Mm -hmm. Let me show you some more cool spots. All right, you guys. This is Austin's fault. He peer pressured me. My dad killed more deer out here than anybody else. He killed three bucks out here. And the first one that he ever killed was in that tree right over there. The deer came walking, he came walking down this road and sort of hooked a left and dad shot him. That was a big, like six or seven point. But, come on baby, let me show you. There we go, now I got a perfect shot. This was my spot right here, y'all. This tree, we had a lock on right up there. And I like that spot because we hunt a lot in the afternoons. In that cabbage palm, it created shade. It also kept you from being backlit. So if the deer were out here and they were looking up, they had all the palm tree that covered your back. Now, the only deer I ever killed in my whole life out here was a big seven point. I killed them two years ago. Uh. I think he down right there. No, there he goes. There he goes. He's right. Went down right there. Yes! That was a long story, baby. Thank you, Lord for the blessings in my life. I'm almost to get emotional. Five years ago, I got this property. I couldn't afford it whenever I got it. No, are you? <laughs> You're about to drop my wrench in the hole. I went out on the biggest limb of my life. Like, my mom and dad told me I was crazy for spending the money and leasing this place and doing what I've done. And I put every nickel that I make into my home, my ranch, and my business. I've never killed a deer on this property. I've never wanted to kill a deer on this property, but me and Sarah found this buck, and we just really set our sights on that deer right there. Never gave him a name. He was just a buck we were after. This is my brand new bow. It's a bear refine. I can shoot any bow on the market that I want to shoot, and I've had numerous bows. I typically buy them and give them away. And it's not because I was given this bow, because I was, Bear gave me this bow. But I would say that this is my favorite bow I've ever shot. Of any bow that I've ever shot, this is my favorite bow. I've killed some big deer. I've killed some small deer. All of them are special. But I promise you, in my life, this is an amazingly, amazingly special deer. Hey guys, long time no see. It is October, oh Siri thinks I'm talking to her. It's October 5th, it's the first time that I get to hunt the ranch because Emma's been sick, the kids have been busy, I've been busy with them, so I am so excited. I've been shooting every day, I've been practicing. Wisconsin's next week, we got exciting things coming up, but this is my first time at the ranch and Rob has worked his tushy off. Freaking great shot, babe. Great shot. Did you have the GoPro? I didn't even, I didn't, I was like, he better be on it because I'm not waiting. Babe, oh, I didn't even have time to process that. Oh my God, okay, okay. I have to give Rob a lot of credit for this because earlier today I was a little pouty because he told me not to shoot. Can I talk loud? Yeah, 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 you're good. That um. <laughs> Folks, that just happened just right there. Okay, okay, can I start over? <laughs> Beautiful buck. Is that the one you had on camera? Exact, exactly. That's buck that I thought it was. Oh Look at that. Oh my god. Woo! Look you guys, I've been with Rob 
literally one less than one month shy of 10 years and this is my first florida deer ever hey emma what is that deer track? that's a deer track deer track so you guys this i mean oh, this is a very 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 special spot right over there was a food plot we called electric chair and then austin and chloe came in chloe you killed your deer out of that tree that right there right that's what yeah. i thought i didn't know so that. chloe killed a deer out of there wow man we originally attempted to climb this tree right here and none of that footage was ever filmed because we got up about that high and we were falling out of the stand. So we ended up climbing that tree right there, that sable palm, and deer came right down the road and 10 yards, Chloe got her first buck right there. Nice shot. What do you think about that? Pretty awesome. It was a great hunt. Oh my That's bigger than my first deer with a bow. <laughs> <laughs> we were right there. Yeah. And me and Aria, we came in here one afternoon. We knew right there. Yep. Can you take me and show me where you where do you think you were sitting when you killed the deer? Go take me exactly where you think you were sitting. It wasn't there. I remember this was one thing. This would always fill up with water. That's right. And then I remembered I had to walk here. And here and here right there. That's exactly where we were. So we were sitting right there. And when the deer came in, the deer came through those palmettos, worked, worked, worked. And then it looked like he was gonna go down the road. I mean, she sat here motion go sit, go show him right where you were sitting. But she sat there so long that her legs went to sleep and she had her crossbow up on a up on a, a stick and i was filming right behind her well finally last the deer when the deer came in he was standing like right there and he worked around and when she shot the deer he was literally standing about right here yes you Did just I Get you him? did a perfect shot, did baby. I? You got I'm him. I'm like, I, I, I couldn't get him, but did he fall? You got him, baby. He's right there. He is? Yes. He is? Oh, my God, baby. My legs are like, my foot is burning. Oh, my gosh. You felt, look at your arrows. <laughs> oh, my gosh. See you. See what I, and. What do you know? You get that deer map. He's on the deer. Okay, this is a happy oh. moment for me. This will be the first deer he's ever found. Yeah. Where's that deer map? Where's he at, boy? Yeah. Where's that deer at, boy? Yeah. Where's he at, boy? Yeah. There's your deer, baby. Yeah. He found the deer. Oh, Go get your deer, baby. Go get him. Oh my gosh. Wow! How awesome is that, honey? Levi's coming over then. Levi's definitely coming over. Mav, you did such a good You see he's barking, he found the deer. Uh, yeah, he did. Good job, boy! Good job, boy! Yeah, you did a good job! I hope you go on a lot of hunts with me. <laughs> but you'll never, ever, ever kill your first deer again. Yeah. Give me a hug. I've got a pond that I'm trying to build into a fish oasis. So this is our last day on the ranch and Rob just informed me that I can have this little John boat. For years we use this John boat just to do a little work around here at the clear pond. And this is awesome, man. The next time you see me in this boat, we'll be hunting somewhere on some public land. Bleh. Yes. Thank you, Jesus.
if you look, there's there's gonna be deer meat there, deer meat there. There's heck, that whole thing's full of deer meat. What, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Congrats, man. Awesome, bro. Thanks, man. Kill the double boys, yes! Two gobblers, one shot, Kent, TK7. If nothing else, we're making a lot of noise, folks. I can promise you that. But it's so thick under there that you can't see anything. So they're bringing out all kinds of equipment, and we are going to tear that all out, move it all, make that beautiful under there. All around camp, we're going to completely manicure this place and make it look like I've always dreamed it would look. Dad, thank you for all your help, man. You've been huge. All right, you guys, all I can tell you is the last three days have been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much to Everglades Farm Equipment, PJ Cruz, and John Deere Tractors. We have turned my camp into something I've been dreaming about for many years. Look here behind us. This is what we would call an oak hammock. Big oak canopy. We've gone in and we've pulled out just thousands of feet of vines. We've dug up all the palmettos. I don't know if you can understand, this entire area behind us was a useless jungle before. Now it's wide open, beautiful. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna fertilize it with 12-12-12 fertilizer, which is great for the oaks. It's gonna give those acorns all the nutrients they need to grow. And anytime you have oak trees that are dropping acorns, you're gonna have lots and lots of game. We're also gonna add one more feeder out here so that if you're sitting on the front porch or on the back porch, you're gonna be able to see some wild game every morning and every afternoon. This is corn. Dad, can I get some? Absolutely, here, pull this. What is that, Em? Alligator. We have a big one. It's a little steer. Mm -hmm. You good boy. You good boy. Yeah. You good boy. That one's dead. You shot a big bar. Yes. <laughs> That's a big bar. Where did I hit him? This is your first bar. It's a oh nice tee. Did it. 12 minutes, we'll be back. Check this out, y'all. Thank you, baby. Awesome. It's my life. <laughs> Sweet. You want it to feel like your thumb. Like if you feel your thumb, well. Right. <laughs> okay, that, I like I, that one, Robert. I swear to God, I did not <laughs> even mean to say that. <laughs> Alrighty. I have been known to put my foot 
squarely in my mouth. It has never been caught on tape quite so well. I want to thank everybody who made that ranch the ranch. It's gone. That's how life is. Life is short. Life is fleeting. Uh, thank you so much, Ethos, for being a part of this video. Thank you so much for all of you for making it what it is. The good news is, my family, we're looking for property, and we're going to move on. Thank you so much for making the ranch a great six years part of my life. I love you all, and I will see you soon. But for now, that's all I've got. Take care. God bless. And say it with me. We gone.